Hello guys, last week I've shot a video called Junior Code Review, which went almost viral and it was pretty popular. So I decided to shoot a follow up to the same code and transform it into a proper route resource CRUD. So in this video, you can call it another Junior Code Review, but on a specific topic, transform this set of routes into route resource. And don't get me wrong, this code works, but in my opinion, it may be more pretty especially if you work in a team and someone else can take over the code in the future. First, how it works visually. It's a table of production orders and you may add a new order. It shows a model window, enter something, you save and you have the same table and then you can edit some record in a model window or delete a record. So again, it works, but now let's make it more pretty and more readable. In theory of route resource by Laravel, there are seven verbs, seven actions. List of items, create form, submit of creating form, then showing the record, editing the record, updating the record, and deleting it. In this case, we have five actions because there is no show method, and also create form is a part of index as a model window. So we won't change how it works, we'll just transform the code. So our goal is to replace all those five lines with this one line. And let's start with index, with list. Let's comment it out. And first thing is the name of the index route should be index. So name production orders should be production orders dot index. But if we use route resource, then we don't need to specify that. It automatically takes care of it and assigns those route names. So we can comment that out as well. And let's go to that controller and see what index does. Let's reformat it a bit with PHP Storm. And OK, index shows the table view. And let's try to load that from route resource. We refresh the page. There will be probably an error. And in this video, we will go one by one, error by error, and fixing them. So in the table view, which is index blade, there is no production orders delete route. So let's open that table view and search for delete. So production orders delete. It's a link to delete the record and we will take care of that the last. And also there's edit view that wouldn't work for now. So let's comment it out temporarily. Refresh the page. Now there's no production orders create. Okay, let's take care of create. Copy that, paste here. Okay, and this is a model window for create form. And we need to assign the route according to all those names. So if we open up the table, photos store should be the route name. So production orders dot store, and it will automatically call the method called store. So if we refresh the page, now it loads and it loads the model window. But now if we fill it in, store method wouldn't be called because in the original routes web, it's not called store. It's called create route post to create. So we need to find the method create in the controller and rename it to store. And I already see that the methods are not in the order, so we will reorder them as well. So let's take care of create and let's put them on top. So index and then create and it should be store. In this video, I will not change the internals of the methods almost. That should be optimized as well. But the goal here is to put route resource in routes web. So the only thing I would change is redirect not back, but redirect to route and route name. What is the name of the list? It's production orders dot index. And let's try it out. Let's add some numbers, some amount and some name, save. And yay, we successfully transformed index, create and store. Next is edit form. So if we go to the table view blade, the thing that we commented out, let's return back the edit button. So there is an edit button and it leads to that route, which should be changed. According to the resource structure, again, edit should be dot edit. So production orders dot edit. And let's try it out. Refresh the page, click edit, and it should probably throw an error because the method is named differently. In the original routes web, get to the update is called update ID and the name is create view, which is pretty bad in itself. It's an edit view. It's not create view. So even naming is wrong. But anyway, let's find that create view somewhere here. And it's the last again, let's move it up. So create view should come before update and delete and it should be renamed to edit. Now if we refresh that, 
it's a better error, another error. So in the blade of that production update order, there is no route for production orders. And of course, because it should be production orders dot index now. Refresh again, production orders update not defined. So production orders update is a form submission route, which should be production orders dot update. Refresh. Again, production orders not defined, so probably somewhere else. Here at the bottom, production orders dot index, refresh, and yay, we have edit form. Before we move to update, I would like to introduce a thing called route model binding. In the controller, instead of searching for ID like this, Laravel has a smart system to run find or fail under the hood for you if you specify the parameters correctly. So you may pass as a parameter production order object production order and naming here is pretty important. So production order should be singular from routes web production orders. And then what it does, we don't need that line at all because production order comes automatically with route model binding. And then in the table view, we pass not the ID, but pass all object. And let's try it out, refresh, it still works. Now let's go to the update. So in the update order view, I would actually rename even the views to edit blade or index blade or create blade, but that's a personal preference. So we go to production orders update, method post, and according to Laravel standards of route resource, the verb for update should be put or patch. To do that, we add method put here in caps then it would be automatically redirected to the correct route. And let's try it out. Refresh the page. Let's put some one at the end. Probably there will be some error. And this is another bad practice, by the way, with this project in particular, the validation. If the validation is incorrect, then it just redirects back without any errors. So let's take a look what update method does wrong and why it redirects back. So update method, it exists with correct name. So let's put it before delete. So let's put delete a bit down below. And let's take a look at update method. There is a validation, it could be done better with form request or request validate. But this is not our goal in this video. What I've noticed though, is incorrect field name. So production order name here and production order number is the actual name. So if we change that to production order number, that validation should pass. Let's try it out. Let's add one here. And it is updated, but redirected back. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like redirect back as a success thing. We should return to the actual route of production orders index. Let's try it out again. Let's add another one at the end. And we have a success thing. Also, let's add route model binding to here as well. So instead of ID, let's add production orders, production order like this, then we don't need find or fail here. And also in the edit, we pass not ID, we pass full object like this. Refresh again, edit form works. Let's delete one of those ones. We save and it is updated successfully. Finally, let's take care of delete and destroy action. And the error here in this code is I see that the delete method is a get link, just link to the route. It should be form for security reasons. Instead of this link to delete route, it should be a form with method post to the action of route production orders destroy without a dollar. And then we will pass the production order also with route model binding. Then we add CSR after that form and method delete. Similar what we did with put for delete for destroy method, we need delete, and then we need to add submit button. So that link will actually become a submit button. Let's copy that or cut actually into here. And instead of a link, let's make it a button. We don't need href here anymore. So we delete it like this. And then at the end of the line, there's a button closing and also button type submit. Submit. Let's refresh. The list looks like this and we have a delete button. 
with styling forms in HTML are rendered as new line. To avoid that, you need to play around with CSS style. The simplest way in this example, I will just add inline style, style display inline block like this. We refresh and there's a delete button. Also, we need to add a confirmation, which also didn't exist in this previous code. On submit of the form or on click of that submit, we should add on click JavaScript. It may be inline. You can do that another way, but I just like to do it simple. Return, confirm, are you sure? And then if you click that button, it's asking you, are you sure? If you cancel, then nothing happens. But if you do want to delete, there will be an error because it's looking for a method called destroy. In the old code, the method is called delete. And we need to rename that to destroy. And also we need to add that route model binding. So production orders, production order. Then we don't need this line. We delete. And then again, we don't redirect back. We redirect to route of production orders index. Refresh again, resubmit the form. And as you can see, the record is deleted. So now what do we have here? In the routes web, we have one line instead of five. In the controller, we have all the methods that are in order of things actually happening. So list, then create and store, then edit, update, and delete. And also there's a bit more order of redirecting to the actual routes, using route model binding to make controllers a bit shorter. And I think it's already a big step to make that code better. What do you think? Anything I've missed in doing route resource? Shoot in the comments. And I'll probably make more code reviews videos like this one, like making the real code better. And again, as I said in a previous video, I'm doing that not to scrutinize or blame that person for this code. It's a junior beginner developer. And that code already worked even before my changes. My goal here is to make beginners or juniors code better so they would work effectively in a bigger teams with bigger projects. If you want to support me on my mission, you can support me financially by checking out one of three products you can see on the screen, our admin panel generator, my courses, and my live wire components kit. See you guys in other videos.